Hi, it's Stuart from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs in a wet and cold January Reading in Berkshire, United Kingdom. And historical note for those of you watching in the year 2040, we're in Covid lockdown at the moment, so I've got plenty of time for projects. On the bench today we've got a fantastic example of a Marshall JMP 100 watt super lead. This is the reissue, but it's very faithful to the, to the original and it's immaculate inside, a really beautiful amplifier. And we're going to be showing you today how to bias this amp. So I'll whip the chassis out of the case and uh, join you in a moment. I've removed the chassis now from the amplifier and here it is up on the bench top side. I thought I'd show you how I connect the bias meters. Now don't panic, I've got two bias meters attached here one on um, each of the pairs, so this one is going to the left hand valve, that's one pair, this one's going to the right hand valve, that's another pair, and in case you don't know the bias meters, simply plug between the socket and the valve. So you plug this into the socket, you plug the valve into the socket on top of the bias probe. Um, I use two bias probes really because I've got them and I can simultaneously monitor the current through both halves. But you don't need to do this if you've got a good quad matched pair of tubes. All you should really need to do is to measure any one tube and the other four should be the same. However, if you're minded to, you can measure another tube and just double check once you've set up the bias that the current is correct. So what I'll do now is flip this over and stand it on my custom wooden stands here so that I can show you how to adjust the bias from the inside. Here we are on the underside of the board and I thought I would just show you this amp because it's a very nicely built amplifier. You can see it uses top quality components and it's been beautifully put together. This is the reissue version of this amp, of course. You can see I have my bias meters connected and I've got 496 volts on one tube and 491 on the other. I'm using two bias meters just because I've got two and so I can simultaneously monitor the two halves of the push-pull arrangement. If you don't have two bias meters you can obviously just use one and uh, if you have a good matched quad of tubes that should be good enough really but of course you can always shift the bias meter from one tube to another and check like that. Before I go too much further with this I want to say that you don't need a bias meter to uh, bias this amp. There is another way although it's a little bit more complicated and I'll be showing you how to do that when we've finished with this particular setup. Let me now just show you the uh, the bias pot <coughs> and that is here one I've got my screwdriver in and turning the pot clockwise increases the bias current and turning it anti-clockwise which is what I'm doing now decreases the bias current. I'm going to set this up at about 30-35 um, milliamps. There's a very good bias calculator online which I'll put up on the screen in a moment and that, that allows you to calculate the correct bias current for whatever plate volt voltage you've got. You can probably probably see there's a um, I'll move this lead out of the way, there's a bit of a discrepancy between the bias currents on this amp. One is 36 milliamps, one is 31. Um, that's at the limit of what I would normally accept but the customer doesn't want a new set of tubes so I'm going to leave these in and that's perfectly acceptable. So as it happens when I turned the pot there I ended up on approximately the right bias current so I'm going to leave well enough alone on that 
and that amp is now biased fine. What I'd like to do now is to show you a way of biasing this amp without using a bias meter. I hope you can see this but on this tube base here pins 1 and 8 are connected together with a short length of tinned copper wire and that wire if I can come around here maybe, goes down to a ground tag. That's the cathode of the valve, one of the output valves, and that is grounded. And it's the same for each of the other four valves. You can't see so clearly on the other valves. But each of those valves has a identical length of tinned copper wire going from pin 8 down to a solder tag, in other words, to ground. All of the current through a particular tube goes down through that piece of tin copper wire to ground. So if we could interrupt that and put a, a resistor in there, <coughs> here we have a 1 ohm resistor. This is a 2 watt resistor, but a 1 watt resistor is perfectly okay. To measure the bias current through a valve, for example this one, what you would do would be to cut this piece of tin copper wire here and insert instead this 1 ohm resistor. You can do it with one tube base if you assume you have a fully matched set of tubes or if you're feeling kind to future people I would certainly go and change all of those and put a 1 ohm resistor a 1 ohm 1 watt resistor in the cathode of each of those tubes. Now why would we do that? Well, if all the current now goes through our 1 ohm resistor to ground, we can measure across there with an ordinary digital voltmeter set on a millivolt scale, and if for example we read 45 millivolts across that resistor, that would mean 45 milliamps were going through the resistor. That's because, of course, this is a 1 ohm resistor. 30 millivolts read on the meter would be 30 milliamps. So we can directly read off, just by clipping a multimeter across our 1 ohm resistor, the cathode current or the tube current going through any output tube. So that's a really neat way of biasing an amp without using a bias meter. One final thought, and whilst I've got the amp open, it's just possible that you might not have the range on this pot to get the bias current you want. Either you can't get enough bias current or it's too high and you can't turn it down enough. If that happens to you, you're going to need to mess around with the value of this resistor here, which on my amp is 47k. Decreasing the value of that resistor will increase the bias current. So if you don't have enough bias current with this maxed up full, you need to decrease the value of this resistor here. That's quite good news because it just means you can tack an extra resistor across it in parallel. If this is 47k, I wouldn't start with anything less than 220k. And then work down from there until you get what you need. I would just put a couple of crop clips on here and put a resistor on the other end. There aren't high voltages on here, it's about 50 volts, so... But I wouldn't go touching anything anyway, just as a rule of thumb, never touch anything. <clears throat> um, now, of course, if you want to do the opposite, and you need less bias current, it's all too hot, you're going to need to increase the value of this, and that does mean taking the resistor out and replacing it with another one. And again, I'd go up to 56k to start with, um, again, if I was doing this, I'd cut this lead here and put a crop clip here and a crop clip here and then crop clip in a few resistors until I got what I wanted and then finally swap out this resistor for a fixed resistor. So that's what to do if the bias pot is out of range. Well, for once, that was pretty straightforward and I hope you enjoyed it. A lovely, lovely amp, one of my favourite amps and a doddle to bias. So I hope you managed to bias yours okay and thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.